Hello and welcome back and that is right today I want to help you decide whether you should choose QNAP or Synology for your photography now. In this video we're going to be taking a close up look on the AI powered photo recognition tools from both of these platforms. On the left hand side we have got QNAP with their QMaggie software and on the right hand side we are looking at Synology with Synology Photos. And although I'm on the screen right now here at the bottom, let's face it, you didn't come to this video to see me, so I'm going to get rid of myself in this intro in just a moment. But before we go any further, a couple of little notes straight out the door. Number one, I've actually made a video like this a few years ago. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, uh, this is Synology Photos versus QMagian Photo Station, and that is from um, just a little over two years ago. And both of these applications have seen numerous updates to uh, their features and their layout in a number of key areas in that time. So if you did watch that video this video is still worth looking at because there are a number of key features that have been added to both of these platforms in that time that are worth knowing about but if you've watched that you can maybe skim this one the other thing i'll touch on while we're talking about and comparing these two platforms is both of them arrive with mobile apps as well both of them arrive with a mobile application for ios and android that will not be featured in this video but i will be discussing it in a follow-up video soon or alternatively i have already compared those two applications a couple of years ago as well but again they have seen numerous updates and the last thing i'm going to highlight throughout the course of this video both of these NASs are, have got the same data they've both got access to the same folders that they're archiving all of their data from and on top of that both of them are pretty darn similar NAS systems they're both running on a quad core Intel Celeron base so both of them are using a Celeron although I would argue there is um oh, the Celeron inside the DS920 is older another thing I'll highlight is there's six gig of memory running in the DS920 and there's eight gig of memory running in the TS264 here a two bay and a four bay but that will have very little impact in what we're doing and also just the last one it is worth highlighting as you can see here on screen I've had to split these across now that is so I can show everything side by side site as a basis of comparison but the result is things might get a little squished at times so i apologize in advance if that is the case but normally you will be able to full screen either one of these and it will allow you to see things in a much larger field of play so just bear that in mind when you are looking at how we're handling both of these applications as i get that to snap appropriately there to that side of the screen but let's go straight into it so Right now, we're accessing both of these via a desktop browser. Yes, there's client tools available to download, but the primary screen you are going to see is this. This is the timeline view of both of these. Now, the first thing you've almost certainly noticed, and I will get rid of myself here on the bottom of the screen, you may have already noticed things on the right-hand side with the Synology are way more animated. There is support of both live photos and GIFs on the Synology photo side. So if you've got a large collection of those, you're already going to be enjoying them more on that side. Indeed, we can pull up the same image on both of these. This is the same file, but as you can see on the Synology side, it's operating that GIF immediately. Same file, but unfortunately on the QMaggie side, that is not available straight off the bat. Now, to counter that point ever so slightly, I will say that the customization of the default view, there are more options on the QNAP side there. So on the Synology side, we can flick between a folder view here, more on that later, or we can flick towards that timeline view. Yes, we can tailor some of those, we can change some of the filters, more on that later on, and we can go ahead and upload direct photos to this, again, something that is available on both platforms, but when we go to the QNAP side, the customization of that view is actually a little bit more detailed. You can go for a more flexible view where the size of the images are adjustable, just like they are on the Synology side there. But you can resize it to have more images, medium images there, and again, fuller sized images all the way through. So there's a little bit more customization on the default view of all of your images when you're accessing remotely or over the network, but at the same time, support of live photos and GIF on the Synology side cannot be underestimated. But if we flick um, over to that folder view between both of these, so again, we go into the folders view there, and we go into the folders view there, 
this is where we see another difference in the way these things are laid out. So in the case of the QNAP, we can break down into those folders and we can see all of those individual folders there, but we're not really seeing the nice fancy graphics until we go deep. Now, you might be already thinking, well, that seems a little unfair, doesn't it? You were comparing them on the QNAP side. It was those vague folders then. It only really looks slightly comparable between these. I would argue the Synology side is definitely the more appealing and easy on the eye between the two of them. And again, you can change those thumbnail sizes um, a little bit more all the way along. So there is an element of customization too. But the reason we can flick between a lot more folders here than we can on the Synology side is to do with indexing. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, with Synology Photos, Synology Photos between the two of them is arguably the more responsive. If we go into the individual files and folders there, and we go into Christmas between the two of them, we look at the layout of the same photos across the two of them, we can see that the responsiveness was a lot quicker here on the Synology side of things. And again, we've got that GIF image there that isn't really running, but although they're working together at the same pace, the Synology side seemed a little sharper, it seemed a little bit more responsive. Now it does that for one specific reason. It limits the folders and albums you can access. What do I mean by that? Well, when you go into the Synology backend and you go into uh, the settings options there for indexing all of your files and images on the fly as you go, you go into the indexing, you select indexing folders, you select which folders and file, uh, so which folders individual multimedia types are in, which sounds good, right? Unfortunately, Synology Photos does not allow you to store photos in any other directory to be accessed except for the main photos. You have to put them in the Photos folder, or I believe you have to put them in directly into the Homes folder. Then it can access it. You can't tell Synology Photos to go to the multimedia folder. You can't tell it to go into this folder, to break down into that and find it there. You have to put your photos in a preset folder within the system there. You can't tell the Synology Photos app to find the photos, which is very different to the way it is on the QNAP. Because on the QNAP side, you can tell it where your photos are and then QMaggy will find them. So in terms of folders and indexing, you have a greater degree of control on the QNAP side. Notwithstanding that you can go into the control panel here and access you know, indexing just like you can on the Synology, but on the QNAP side, you have an app known as Multimedia Console. And this allows you to select, for example, QMaggy, and then tell QMaggy to specifically target folders on the NAS. It gives you a greater degree of freedom and choice on how the system is finding those resources for photography. And it's something the Synology side, despite innovations recently in terms of AI recognition on Synology photos, still lacks. And that multimedia kind of indexing is pretty deep. You can choose where you want this app to never have that has access to you can schedule thumbnail generation a great deal more extensively and create multiple copies of those thumbnails depending on the devices accessing remotely there's a huge amount of control and customization built into the QNAP side that is absent or at least absent in terms of control on the Synology side there now let's go back into both of those apps there now back into that view there the main view Another thing we should really, really take a moment to talk about is how photos are interpreted on both of these devices. And particularly for the photo professionals, what, how much information is ready, ready and accessible to an end user. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, a lot of users that take advantage of quite um, kind of detailed photography and really care about the aperture, the ISO, the device that took the photo, will want to see that information. Now, it can be accessed in two different ways. If we go into both of these, and we go back into the folder view on both of them, and we go into the Christmas album, and we find a very specific photo. So the reason I'm going to pick this specific photo is quite simply because I look a fool in it. And we'll find a photo of me wearing a ridiculous hat. And that's the one we're going to focus on 
right now. So let's find that ridiculous photo. Let's find it in particular because it is awful. I know I'm keeping you here, but trust me, I look so idiotic in this picture. It will be worth it, I promise you. So let's go for it there. I presumably have scrolled past it like a madman. There we go. So we find this photo on either side, on the QNAP side and on the Synology side. Well, again, we're not worried too much about the picture quality on both of these. What we're concerned with right now is, and you can see the thumbnail generation isn't quite as responsive as it is on the QNAP side, as it is on the Synology side there. But we'll find that photo on both sides here. And again, we can share it if we choose. If there is a live photo version, we can play the live version. If we choose, let's go back to that photo there. On top of that, we can go ahead and share it across both of these. You know, fairly similarly, we can, you know, decide how we want to share it, whether we want to give the link a very preset name. We can choose dates, validity periods. There's a few more options available on the Synology side. And if we come out of it there, the real thing we want to look at is the information tab between both of these. We'll come out of it there, we'll leave. It's the information tab we care the most about. Now, on the Synology side, we've got the geolocational data there. We have got uh, the photo. We've already named me in that one, looking like a tip. And we've got a little bit of information here with regards to the device that took the photo. Not loads, but we've got a little bit of it. Now, we compare that to the Synology side. It looks like there isn't much, right? Well, we click more, and there's absolutely shed loads of information. We have geolocational information. We have so much information to choose from that's been like ripped from the metadata in this photo. And although both NASIs had this much information to access, the Synology side is the one that allows you to dig for it and find it easily. I say dig, it's a single tab. Now, how does that information manifest itself? Well, let's go back to the main menus of both. This manifests itself in the filter. So both of them arrive with a preset filter system built in. Now this allows you on the fly to kind of curate how you want photos to be accessible. What do I mean by that? We'll have to switch to the personal space there. And again, more on that personal space later on. Both of them allow you to choose, for example, we want um, photos, we want um, to go for photos with specific people in them. So I'm gonna go for photos, for example, that I've got uh, Robbie and Katie in them across both of these so again we'll do that Robbie and we'll go for Katie so again both of them are filtering live next we can choose a year so both of them are only going to go for photos in 2020 photos in 2020 as you can see it's found both of those photos and again geolocational data is built into the Synology side a little bit more information not quite as much on the QNAP side, but at least the filters do work for both of them. Now, if we choose both of those photos in both of these instances, from here we can go ahead and either choose to share those images. Again, both of them have got the share option. We can choose to create a new album if we choose. Again, both of them allowing fairly similar options overall for creation of those albums. Download them locally, bin them if we choose, and edit some of the properties and data. But in the case of the Synology, it just feels a little bit more intuitive. Not loads more, it's very, very close. But still, both of them, I think there's a little bit more um, catering on the Synology side. And just a few more configuration options to really take advantage of what's there. The other thing I've touched on already is... Well, let's go out and remove all of those filters. Let's uh, disable the filtering system there. Actually, just before we end that section, it's worth highlighting the, all that metadata we scraped earlier on can also be filtered in. And as you can see, there's actually a lot more additional options you can add to the filters on the QNAP side. So before I move on, although I said the Synology side feels a little bit more intuitive, and it does, there is arguably more featured um, filters that you can apply thanks to the scraping of that metadata on the QNAP side than on the Synology. Again, something we're going to hear more and more whenever comparing these brands long term. But next up, let's face it, it's going to be an important factor for a number of you. It's going to be the AI side of things. You want to know just how good the AI is. Now, what do I mean by the AI? Well, nice and simple. If you have decades, and you probably do by now, have decades of photos in your collections and you're archiving them over time and then you're moving them maybe away from Google Drive and the Apple platforms and stuff 
and moving them onto a NAS, most of those photos are not going to have intuitive names, are they? Like if I go into the uh, albums here and we look at just the names of some of the photos we're dealing with here, we'll go uh, this time into uh, my niece's 16th birthday. We go in there and we look for another ridiculous picture of me and we find out the information. We can see this file name is horrendous. It's absolutely useless and that is where AI comes in. What AI does is it analyzes the contents of the photos, not the names. And the result is that, for example, we have an album called People and it's finding people's faces. Now, let, what that does is it's finding the same face and then moving forward when you upload photos of that person again, they get added to that database. But the strength and the ability of these AI databases aren't quite the same on both platforms. Now, to put that into perspective, now, again, you have to forgive it all being a bit squished in here on the QNAP side. We have got 31 items on the QNAP side. It's recognized 31 faces overall. On the Synology side, we have got 5, 10, uh, 5, 10 15, 20, 25, 30, 33 faces. It's actually found two more faces overall. Now, arguably... It could be that a face has been mistaken as two separate faces. It could be because some of these are people that have clearly been in the background of a photo. Because again, they've taken a photo of this person. I'm not bothered who that is. They just happen to be in a photo. But still, nonetheless, having the idea that you can uh, catalog slightly more faces on the Synology side isn't too shabby. But have you noticed that guy's face isn't in the Synology side? It's not there. Even though it's catalogued it, as one photo here, it has not found it here on the Synology side. So the AI is clearly not quite the same across both of these platforms, as in some cases, some faces have not been found. Now, that, that logic does extend quite high when you look at the new edition of a, a subject and thing recognition. Now, for a long time, subject and thing recognition was not available on the Synology side. It was something in the predecessor known as Synology Moments and absent in Synology Photos for almost two years. And now it's available. But even though it's available, I would still argue quite extensively that it's simply better on the QNAP side. What do I mean by that? Well, neither one of them is perfect. But have you noticed that the names are slightly different here? We've got food. We've got food. But we don't have greenery. What we have here on the right-hand side is food, furniture, fast food. But what you want is the element of breaking in a little further. What do I mean by that? Well, if we click the food tab on the Synology side, yeah, it's true. We've got loads of food. We've got sliced ham. We've got sausage rolls. We've got parmiers. I do not have the healthiest diet. And we've got little tiny gingerbread John McLean's. And I don't expect it to know that's John McLean, but at least it recognised that it's food. However, the term food is pretty darn vague. That's a lot of different kinds of food there. Whereas on the QNAP side, when we click food, it breaks down into subcategories. We've got bread we've got bananas now it's not accurate that's clearly a tiny pint and not a carrot but still nonetheless it differentiates and the ones that it can't differentiate or at least hasn't got the ability to even make an estimation are still under a heading called food but even then those subcategories overlap so just because it's saying for example that it knows something is onion rings it doesn't remove the tag for food there's clearly multiple tags afoot with different photos so when we go into pizzas here on the right hand side and again i've had to move that across because of the squishing of things we can see that it's clearly designated that this is both pizza and food and that ability to do multiple tags allows you to be more precise about the things you're finding again it's not foolproof for some reason it does it knows these are drink but it's also labelled one of them as carrot for some bizarre reason. Now, clearly, that's carrots. What the hell is that? It's still good to have that element of digging deeper into the AI recognition. And again, that logic does extend further. It's not just pizzas. So you can go in and break into another category. So, for example, if we go into bread, again, that's ham. It's still not perfect, but it's still recognising elements. Now, 
if subject recognition on the Synology side could just about feature that stuff, it would be fantastic because I know Google Photos has that option. And it's just a shame that they've added now that element of um, thing recognition or subject recognition, but not to a higher degree. Now, if we make our way back into the Explore Gallery, we can go into Places. Both of these support Places. And weirdly, things are completely reversed. On the QNAP side, when we go into Places, because obviously by Places, what it's doing is using the metadata in most cases to analyze where a photo was taken. Even though this is the same two photo albums across both of these, the best we're getting from the QNAP is the southeast of England. Whereas on the Synology side, it's run down into the metadata and it's being far, far more precise. There's a pizza I had in Woolwich in um, the southeast of London. Here's another photo in Round Hill in Brighton. And it's managed to go through all of these different options and identify them by location in far greater detail. The same level of detail I wanted in subject recognition is clearly available in the Places tab, even though both systems have access to the same metadata. Now, another element when it comes to metadata that it is worth touching on is how much metadata, when you're pulling your data over from the likes of Google Photos, do you get to keep? And between both of these, if you download your images from, say, something like Google Takeout, which strips the metadata, Google Takeout will allow you to access all of the data that's stored via all those different apps and pull the photos down, but it will strip that metadata, uh, otherwise known as a JSON file, which you can reattach with third-party tools. But if you're not as worried about that metadata, what you're caring about is the photos themselves. Well, on the QNAP side, fair play to them, they've got tools like the multi-application recovery service, which you can attach to your Google Photos account and then pull all of those photos over. Now, it still seems to be a little hit or miss at times, but the ability to add your Google Photos account and pull that data from the cloud onto your QNAP and then allow QMaggie to use AI tools for people and thing recognition, again, it will not have the JSON metadata, but you will still be able to use the people and things the metadata is pretty darn useful. Whereas the Synology side will have to rely on utilizing the um, takeout service from Google. Now, if you attach and use Google Sync tools, which will allow you to bolt on your cloud service, you can use Cloud Sync, but you can't use Cloud Sync to bolt on Google Photos, just um, uh, Google Drive there. It's just little things like that, which the QNAP side does seem to bring. And it also, again, goes back to the point that I constantly make when comparing Synology and QNAP, that when it comes to these two brands, as good as the Synology software can be, a lot of the time, you have to change your workflow to its kind of default means, where the QNAP side will often give you the option to customize it around your workflow. Unfortunately, that can lead to things like it not running as efficiently as it is on the Synology side, which obviously has a more hard-coded approach to a lot of its services. Now, another thing you might want to do is you've done all of this AI cataloging, you've done all of this kind of indexing and creating all your albums in your decades of photos. So what about searching for a lot of those things? So for example, let's go ahead and search for pizza on both of these. I'm going to search for pizza. I'm going to search for pizza. When I search for pizza, it's found it. And it's found it on both. So clearly, the AI recognition does know that that is pizza. So it super annoys me that that album doesn't have a heading for pizza via the shared space or the local space there. And when I break into the food area, Although I could find the word pizza by searching for it, I still can't access it. Now, let's go with searching for people. So, for example, if we search for Robbie, and we'll find pictures of me. Same goes if we do it on this side. We search for Robbie. We'll find it. How about if we search for two people, Robbie and Katie? And nicely, the Synology side didn't need me to pre-tag. The Synology side was smart enough to know what was what. It's still not showing the same level of photos, something, again, I find very strange, which kind of undermines a lot of the AI results we saw earlier, but still nonetheless, 
you can search for people but i would argue whereas on a qnap side there's not too much of a faff that i've got to actually say them if i search for just robbie and katie in loose text it won't find it it's a tiny detail but one that might be interesting to some now between the two of these i would still say that the synology experience is probably the smoother of the two and it's obviously it's hard coded and that's why you get that but still nonetheless that smooth experience is probably going to be more enjoyable for a lot of desktop users that are into that sort of thing when it comes to accessing this multimedia on a home or business level that's where again there's a slight change because Synology have got, they've integrated the former uh, Photo Station and Moments app to create Synology photos. And if, for example, you're a professional photographer that wants to share your photography with clients, uh, be they ones that are hiring you or you're hiring them, then you can go ahead and create these business spaces or shared spaces very, very quickly. All of which can be customized and allowing you to share photos and create individually curated doorways into your collections that can be password protected that can be user locked and create guest areas as well now on the qnap side you have access to some of those here and you can create shares but when it comes to having a more professional doorway you're sort of forced to use photo station from qnap which is kind of their professional photographer door and it has a lot more of those um customizable business tools for creating uh, more artsy photo albums for your professional photography business the sad thing is i think qnap are now wrapping up photo station putting all of their energy behind qmag in at the moment there's still a, f a handful of abilities such as the map view and some of the uh, tag carryover that isn't complete in uh, qmag right now so professional photographers may miss a lot of those features that are locked into photo station right now that they're waiting to come over into qmaggy qmaggy is a far more customizable platform that works around you and your workflow the ability for example to go into that folders regimen and access a lot more than those preset smaller um, directories limited to you on the Synology platform there. That's quite a handy thing. The fact that the AI breaks down into more detail in the AI things area, which are clearly in the Synology photos area, despite, and again, I'll look up the word tree, for example. Oh no, it didn't find anything. Let's go for something else. Maybe burger. Let's see if it recognized burgers. As you can see, the AI recognition is clearly there in the background. I just don't quite understand why I can't just go into subjects and find it there when I, all I can see is fast food and some of these anacronyms and smaller headings would be so much more desirable here. Overall, between the two of them, they're still great AI-powered photo recognition tools. But if you're looking for something a lot more straightforward, a lot more responsive, but also you're going to have to change your pattern around it, the Synology one is going to be the one for you. If you're looking for a lot more bespoke handling that you know may require a little bit more work on your part to curate and make the most of then the qnap platform may be for you and just bear in mind the qnap platform has got those additional tools there in the background between uh, connection with third-party wordpress albums and uh, google photos as well as support of photo station and of course that great multimedia console tool to really stay on top of it but just bear in mind that that sheer level of customization may lead to a less smooth experience than the one you would experience on the Synology side. Stay tuned, I will be in my next video, coming in the next week or so, be looking at the mobile applications for both of these platforms. I'm going to be looking at Synology Photos for Android and QMaggy for Android as well. So do stay tuned for that. But apart from that, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you did. And other than that, click like and subscribe. It really helps the channel. Use the links in the description for free advice, free support, and where to get hold of the best NAS solutions for you. And I'll see you next time.